is police and fire. So those are the two numbers you have to compare to, to help me uh, illustrate that there has been a focus on public safety in this administration. The cuts to public safety, uh, despite the lack of cooperation, have been less than they should have been just by the budget numbers. By the budget numbers, the cut to public safety should have been twice what I authorized. Because we should have cut six, we should have gotten 60% of that five million out of public safety. That would be three million as opposed to 1.5. So this administration has done everything it can, despite a lack of cooperation uh, at the bargaining table, um, to make sure that we have the largest public safety force that we can afford. And, and the numbers bear that out. Now, I also think it's important to say <clears throat> that our officers, when they're on duty, work extremely hard. I mean, they're the hardest working cops, you know, anywhere within 100 miles. So they get on shifts, they make arrests, they prevent crimes, they solve crimes. So I, I just don't want it, it to be mistaken that be, because we're having challenges at the, at the bargaining table around a contract, that this police force um, is not out there working hard fighting crime every day. And, and I know that you know that a union official has a certain role. So when they make comments to the media, they're, they're in that role as a union official. They're not, not in that role as a law enforcement officer uh, working for the city of Flint, if, if you get the distinction. So I just wanted to, to point that out because we're having a tough conversation about where we're at with finances, and I want you to know that our officers, uh, our firefighters, I mean, they're the best in the business. What are you, what are you telling the citizens? What, how can we help get mm -hmm. over this hump? Mm -hmm. what, what are you asking of, of the taxpaying residents of Flint right now? Right. Well, the number one thing that citizens can do uh, is to be vigilant, you know, in their own communities, on their own blocks. Uh, we uh, have seven uh, of nine mini stations open and operating. The next two will, will, be, will be opening uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, so we need individuals to take an active role uh, in, in monitoring their own streets, their, their own, uh, you know, their own kids, their own grandkids with, with the curfews. Uh, those are all things that an officer can't always come by uh, to babysit. Uh, an officer has to be able to focus on uh, the serious law enforcement issues, and we need residents uh, to take care of their own, uh, you know, their own blocks, uh, their own kids and grandkids, the youth in their lives, and um, you can be a volunteer at one of our many stations and be part of uh, a block club, uh, a crime watch, a neighborhood association, all of those things, um, those local partnerships are the things that keep communities safe uh, for the long term. And that's why we'll, we'll be training uh, our officers to do even more with community policing to be a part of those, uh, to be a part of those partnerships. Does and, and the last point on that, which, which the chief has uh, really emphasized, you know, the crimes that have gone unsolved in this community are, are not because an officer hasn't you know, done what they need to do on the investigation. It's because someone in this community has information about a crime that they're not sharing with the authorities. Uh, so when that information is able to come forward, we have the investigative capacity, the prosecutor has a proven record uh, of being tough on crime, and those individuals will be brought to justice, uh, but citizens uh, have to step up and do their part. Well, I've heard the exact opposite. I mean, I've heard where people have had uh, addresses, IDs of people that are breaking in houses and taking um, violent things off the house and nothing has happened to them. Um, you're encouraging us to get more involved, but uh, is there going to be the infrastructure to handle that tidal wave of involvement? And this is what our, our community, I mean, the Chief can talk about what we, some of the specifics. You know, you know, it's more times than not, when we get the information, as you said, that more times than not, that time those people are prosecuted. But there are instances when you give us that information that they're not prosecuted, but there's other things that go on other than that information, and you know it may be a reason why they weren't prosecuted. So, you know, it, without being specific mm -hmm. in specific cases, you don't know that. Okay. Is there? Can we get just two quick things? When we talk about the community policing element, what are, some of the officers have expressed a fear of? I don't want to call it a vigilante justice approach, but is there a fear of some residents as they get involved in in uh, the community community policing element? 
that some might try to take things and in, actions into their own hands, that sort of thing. You know, those things happen. But when we find out that those things are happening, that's when we take care of it. You know, sure. you know, people are people. You know, we can't control people's actions. You know, but when we find out that that's what's going on, it's some vigilante stuff, then we take care of it. Yeah. Just want to get to the grants also. Are some of these grants like three or four year grants? Do they require a, a contribution or a matching from the city in the fourth year at all? Anything like that? Or? The stimulus cops grant does. Right? Okay. W would the city be prepared at, at this juncture or is it too early to say whether or not the city would be able to make a contribution? No, we will. I, I can uh, give you a specific on that so you understand how we're uh, sustaining those grants. That, yeah. that COPS uh, grant that came through the stimulus uh, provides three years of funding uh, mm -hmm. for the officers with the requirement that, uh, a traditional requirement that the city provides a, a fourth year. Mm -hmm. uh, the way we have uh, chosen to structure it is that we have spread that three years of funding out over four years. Okay. And the city is paying a portion of the fourth year in each year. Okay. Uh, so that the, the amount that we're paying today is what we know we can sustain across the four-year period of the grant. So those are the, the smart uh, financial management that we've put in place to make sure that we're able to fully draw down those, those grant dollars. Okay. But, but that top stimulus grant pays for an entry-level officer also, which there's a gap between what we're paying the officer and what the grant is paying. So the city is yeah. actually paying a bigger portion okay. than what you've been told. Are there any more questions? Can I just ask it on the golf courses now? Sure. <laughs> That'll be it. Sure. Sure. So, sure. so what's the deal with that? I mean, they're going to, you close some, where are they going to open? Are we losing money by not having them open? What's the whole situation with the golf courses? Well, the, the way the city's courses have been run over the years, um, the more courses that were open, the more money you lost. So uh, we are uh, concentrating our golf service at Swartz Creek Golf Course. Uh, it'll open on the traditional schedule uh, of the first full week in April. Uh, so we're less than two weeks away from that opening. Um, so stay tuned. All right. Thank, Thank you, you all. Mayor. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dawn Jones, Communications Director for the City of Flint and the host of Talk to the Mayor on WFLT 1420 AM. It airs and broadcasts live every Thursday from 10 a.m. until 10.30. This is an opportunity for you, the residents of the city of Flint, to talk to the mayor and share your questions, your concerns, and even offer up some praise, if you have it, for the leadership that he's been providing thus far. The number to call us on WFLT is 810-239-5733. If you don't have an opportunity to call us on WFLT, you too can be a part of the process. I'm asking you to give the mayor's office a call Monday through Wednesday prior to our Thursday broadcast, and you can leave your questions there. That number is 810-766-7346. This is a community service, and we're glad to have you be a part of this service. Okay, well, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we wanted to uh, put together the leadership team here who could answer uh, your questions uh, that you maybe uh, have on your minds related to public safety and, and this uh, recent outbreak of, of fires. Uh, I'll say a couple things and then uh, turn it over to public safety uh, director Locke uh, to elaborate. Uh, but the, the, the point here is that you know, this is a series uh, of coordinated criminal attacks. Uh, that are designed uh, to, to scare uh, this community. Uh, it's 